Today, let's talk about Feedly and how we can help you automate your content curation. So Feedly is a tool that you can use to basically track all the blogs, all the articles, all the websites that you find important so that you can go ahead and create a library of curated content by other people to later share via social media. One of the most important things to doing things online, especially in social media, is being present and being active and being engaged. So as I see it, there's a three-prong approach to how I would recommend anyone that's using social media to promote their business or their practice use uh, those three approaches. And the three approaches are content curation, where you're finding other people's content to share out, content creation, where you're creating your own original content like I do here for YouTube and my podcast appointment. And the third one is audience engagement, which you should be following along and seeing who's talking about you. What are they talking about? Um, are they sharing your stuff? Are you sharing their stuff? Do they have stuff to say that maybe you want to uh, comment on or reply on? It creates a community. It creates trust building within your online space. So Feedly is the first of those prongs in the way I approach my online presence in the sense of content curation. And it works in conjunction with several other tools that I use and integrate, um, in particular, IFTTT and Buffer, to basically save me time for doing other things, whether it be marketing or producing content or managing my business or studying or anything else that I need to do that's on my plate. And it will save you time. And something like this strategy is very valuable because then you can work on your content creation or your audience engagement so that that way you're constantly online, even if you aren't. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and type in in Google or any search engine of your choice, feedly.com, F-E-E-D-L-Y.com. And once you're there, you can go ahead and get started for free and choose the best method that works for you. Continue with Google, continue with Feedly, log in with Facebook, and they also offer some other tools that you can use and options to log in. I'm gonna go ahead and continue with Google since I'm already logged into my Google Chrome. Once you're there, you're gonna see an empty space, something that looks like this. They're gonna have some recommendations and such. Now, let's say you're in healthcare. What I would do is I would already have have in mind what I want to search for and what I want to follow. Let's say I want to add some content. The first thing I would do is add some content because Feedly lets you do a bunch of things. They have industries, trends you can follow, skills and fun and stuff like that. They have it all laid out and they have a great team that offers some insight as to how you can use Feedly for your needs. So I'm a primary care provider, let's say, not yet, but I will be. Let's say you want to follow the American Academy of Family Physicians, AAFP. Org. And as you see, Feedly does a good job of pretty much guesstimating what you have in mind. And I want to follow their blog. Basically, Feedly searches what you type in and makes a good guess as to what you're looking for in terms of online resource or website. And from there, it makes a list of all the RSS feeds that are related to or have a presence on that site. So in the case of AAFP, they have several of them, several RSS feeds. So let's take a look. I want to follow Fresh Perspectives. I want to see who else is getting in the game. Boom. Follow. I'm almost done. So I need to create a new feed as it recommends. Let's call this. Sure. Let's use their recommendation of medicine. Create. And you'll see it pop up over here with the drop down menu. So it says within this feed, within this group of blog articles and websites, you have one website that you're following. And it is already, as you see, already has five articles that it's recommending um, as the most recent postings on that blog. So let's take a look at that. If we click on it, double click on it, it'll pull up the most recent articles from that website. 
So let's say we want to go ahead and knock it out and get all of the websites and stuff that we follow. So let's say you're a fan of my podcast or a fan of my services in general. Type in my website. It'll search for an RSS feed. It'll say, haha, it has an RSS feed. You follow my website, but do you want to add it to the medicine feed? Probably, yeah. Or do you want to add it to a new feed, tech, or marketing, or app making, or social media? You can make a new feed, of which is a group of articles and a group of websites that you would follow. I'm going to go ahead and keep it under medicine. Let's say you want to do the other blogs that AAFP has present. So you go to AAFP News... You follow that. It will also, Feedly will also make other recommendations based on maybe some other people that are using Feedly. So it makes some good guesses. But in my case, we just want to follow AAFP for this example. So, so far we have one feed called Medicine. AAFP News, AAFP Fresh Perspectives, and then App Access LLC. So those are articles, those are blog pages that have RSS feeds and... What you can do is go ahead and browse it, and when you look at an article, it'll bring up a read later, save to board, mark is read, and mark is read and hide. So what I would do is, and I, I never actually use the desktop version of Feedly because I'm more inclined to use my phone. Once I set it up on the desktop, I was done with the desktop version, and I just go ahead and download the Feedly app, and I curate content straight from Feedly on the app on my phone, you know, when I'm sitting in in uh, the carpool, car, carpool line or something like that. Who knows? But let's say I like this article. I click on this article and what do I want to do with it? Let's say I like it. Let's say it fits what I agree with and what I would like to share to Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook. And it gives you all these options. You can go ahead and do it one by one and click on it, but we're talking about saving time. So, and you know, you can use Buffer and LinkedIn and Hootsuite and you can just click it and it'll send it out if you have that account linked to your Feedly account, which is easy. Um, but in my case, we want to syndicate pretty much everywhere that we know the same audience will be following us. So I would click read later. The magic of read later, and you don't even have to click on the article. If you know straight off the bat from the headline that you like it, go ahead and just read later. Now, here's the magic. Once I've identified a group of articles that I want to share out with my audience, I then click read later. But everything that I click read later on is then sent to IFTTT, which we'll talk about another time. But it sends it to IFTTT, which in turn forwards it to Buffer. Now you could, as you saw, it does have an option to send it to Buffer. And you can change those settings on the desktop. I have to try it for the phone app, whether you can change the layout. Um, let me show you again. You see here it says, hey, do you want to custom sharing or do you want to personalize it and I'm sure it allows you to lay out which buttons you want to see on this on the top there or not but essentially I use IFTTT to send it to Buffer because IFTTT integrates with Buffer and Feedly so once I click it for read later it gets sent to IFTTT read later IFTTT and then it'll send it to Buffer and then Buffer sends it to Twitter and LinkedIn and scheduled it, schedules it. Buffer actually schedules it for release and determines what the best time of day and when to release that article. So this is the free version of Feedly where you can go ahead and select a whole bunch of feeds. I don't think they have any limit, um, but you can select a whole bunch of feeds and then send it on to buffer straight away uh, depending on your workflow i'm going to use the ifttt method here but it sends it on and it curates the content and it keeps it in the hopper for later distribution on buffer and buffer determines when to send it out to twitter like i said or uh, linkedin or facebook um but that's the primer that's basically the introduction there is a pro version that allows you to use 
the keyword alerts. Now with that, you can go ahead and type in even more specific things and just basically scrape the internet. If you wanted to type in specific things about healthcare, like HR 6199 or, you know, and you want, if you wanted to follow a specific strategy, let's say for instance, you wanted to market to new physicians or you wanted to network with new physicians that are also in your field. Uh, you can also type in, you know, stuff like, um, new primary care practice opening or grand opening. And you can, if, as long as you know how to use Google, you can set it up in Google's end and then in, in Google news will automatically bring that to you. Um, but with Feedly, when you integrate that with Feedly, any search of that nature, all your news feeds get filtered through once more through Feedly. And it says, hey, this person in Massachusetts opened up a, a practice. This person in Nevada did the same thing or had the ribbon cutting or whatever. And then whenever they say on their Twitter page or their Facebook page, come out to the grand opening, direct primary care, as long as you have it set up correctly, you know when they put out the word. And it's such a powerful tool because then you can network better. And again, if somebody else is using a tool like this, they will see when you're sending out Twitter posts about them. They will see when you're sending out LinkedIn posts, um, when you're using certain hashtags that have maybe their name or their business or um, the same industry and then that will empower you to get your audience engagement and building your community and building that trust that is necessary online if you're going to be doing the social media strategy. So this is step one. I'm going to talk about IFTTT in another video as well as Buffer. But Feedly is very um, powerful once you set it up and it doesn't take long at all, as you see. But uh, Feedly is free. If you don't want to use the Google keyword search, it's free. And you can send that on to IFTTT, which is free. And you can then send it on to Buffer, which is free. So we're talking about saving money, especially if you're a small practice or a small business owner, an entrepreneur, social media marketer, something like that. As long as you have a small footprint at first, you shouldn't need to pay for much. I pay for Feedly, which is $5 a month, um, comes out to what, $60 for the year, which for me is worth it. Um, I don't pay for anything else. I use pretty much this method and buffer as a content curation method. And then I um, use uh, my Hootsuite funnel as an audience engagement funnel. And both of them are free until it gets maybe I get big and I have a couple clients, five, six, 12 clients, whatever. Then maybe I will go ahead and consolidate and use just Hootsuite or just buffer to do everything for me and manage all the accounts. But if we're talking a streamlined, save time, save money approach, this is very easy. And if you, uh, that's all you need, then this is the method for you. So I hope you enjoyed it. Tune in next time to take a look at IFTTT and Buffer. And then we'll look at uh, how the flow works when you have all three set up. And your content curation should save you time. I'll see you next time.